This system, we believe, is the way of the future. It's going to happen, and if it's not us, it's going to be something else. I'm looking at it similar to like the internet. When Netscape came along, it, everybody says it changed the world, and it did. This is that early stage of the, how the technology is. So the research and development for urban barns has been going on for just about five years, uh, and mostly out in Langley in BC. But we got involved with McGill and uh, uh, into a research partnership, so they can offer us a lot of research, and so it made total sense for us to bring the first commercial operation to Quebec. And so we expect to expand throughout Quebec and, and bring uh, economic development and jobs here to this area. We're finding that each kind of plant has a slightly different need. If we're looking at the over the shoulder there, you can see purple light. And that's just a blend of red and blue light that makes this coloration. We're not positive that's the right mix. We know that it works and we can grow happy plants, but we think there's probably a better mix. So what happens if I add a little bit of green or add a little bit of white light to this stuff? Can I push them that much faster? And the goal is that instead of taking 20 days or 30 days to grow the plants, maybe I can get them down to 15 days. As a production supervisor, I take care of the plants from uh, seed to when we harvest them basically. And I make sure that they get enough water, that uh, whatever's in the water is good for them. We require water to start the system. As the plants uptake the nutrients, they then will transpire it back into the air. We then run it through our HVAC system, so a dehumidification system, which then allows the water to be recovered and can be returned back to the system. So our w water loss is around 5%. If we went into the middle of a desert, we could have a big tank supply us initially, and then we don't have to have a continuous water supply. Unlike a field, which you have to be continuously irrigating and you're losing all that water into space, here we can recover almost all that. So everything needs to be exactly as the plants want it to be. The lights, the temperature, the humidity, uh, the CO2 levels inside, we monitor. But we also monitor for the sugar content, carbohydrates, fiber content, protein content, and these are also other things that we're monitoring. We're finding that we're, I can't say we're quite double, but we're just about double what the USDA standard is. Um, so when they measure all the plants around North America, they say this is the standard, and we're, we're in the upper 10% of the top. And in some cases, we're higher, and sometimes we're just at that 10%. Let's say we get lettuce from here in a standard grocery bag. It's most likely come from California, and it wasn't grown in California. There's a good chance it was grown in Mexico was transported up to California, was repackaged in California, and then was shipped to us. So it takes two or three days to get to California, then it takes a week for it to reach us. So we're measuring these things almost 10 days after they're harvested. When we're measuring ours, we're measuring the day it was harvested, or within hours of it being harvested. And we don't have to harvest the fruit early so that we can make it transport it. What we do is we harvest it when it's at its peak of ripeness so that we can supply it to the consumer at that moment. So we want things that grow really fast, that have a fairly high turnover, and have a poor shelf life. We can do tomatoes, so there's super dwarf tomato plants that are about six inches high and are, do a lot of good production out of that. Um, there's also raspberries, blueberries that could be grown in there, which are fairly small little plants and have a high turnover. So my guess is within five years we'll start to see all this. The technology is almost there. The LED lights are we're like so close. The new, newest technology is what, that we're testing, we believe, is the technology that's required to solve almost all of our lighting problems. But there's some people that believe that if it doesn't come from the soil, then it's not a healthy plant. And we have to convince them that the plant is still healthy even if there is no soil present. I, I can grow a plant in, in the air and just spray water at it and it's still a healthy plant. So here we can see the roots are starting to develop on it, which is a nice healthy little lettuce plant. People worry about our product being grown indoors that it's not natural, that we're somehow doing something unnatural to the plants, but in fact, that's not the case at all. We're giving them the best environment they can possibly have. We don't use any pesticides, any herbicides and so on, so there's no runoff containing harmful uh, chemicals. The cost between our production method and a field farming production method is very comparable. It's not going to be out of line at all because when you have a field farm production style, then you have to add transportation. My background is in the transportation industry, and so I saw firsthand how much food actually gets thrown in the garbage. And for me, it's the future of food to grow it right where the people are. Out of our DC, we're using 12 volt yeah. 
uh, 40 amps is what each one of the power bars can supply. The technology we believe is transmittable anywhere in the world. But as we get into the rural areas or the more isolated areas, they have to transport large distances, but they also have issues with water energy requirements. So we can't set up a warehouse that's this size up in the far north. But we could do something smaller scale, enough to feed 20 people, 100 people, maybe 1,000 people. Most head of lettuce cost around $3, 2 to $3 a head here in Montreal. We should be able to do that anywhere in the world. Consumers will be able to find our products soon in a test market in the Montreal area. And then starting in the spring, it'll be Quebec-wide in all the IGAs. We don't need to transform as much land to put into agricultural production to meet the needs for the future. It is going to slowly progress and then over the next two, three, five years we're going to see these large centers set up almost in every city in the world and then over the next few years it could potentially migrate into the smaller communities also. It's hard to see the future as not being this.